We back. Sock by say YouTube. Welcome back to Cash Piece. Today we're talking a top five lurking conquerors. That means that these characters either have a high probability of having or unlocking Conqueror's Hockey in the final saga of One Piece. Let's get to it. Okay, we're starting off at number five with the former Pirate King's left hand man, Scopper Gabon. In the Odin flashback, he and Odin were shown to be pretty much on par and Odin is built pretty different in the One Piece universe and is a Conqueror's Hockey user himself. At different junctures in the One Piece story, former Roger Pirates have played a huge role in the Straw Hats being prepared before they jump into the next part of the story, so I think that the time for Scopper to come back is right around the corner. I think if Luffy and him meet, there's a high probability that he'll be a Conqueror. Okay, number four, we got Sabo. Sabo is a part of the trio of brothers that grew up in the Goa Kingdom in Ace, Sabo, and Luffy. Ace and Luffy both have shown that they have conquered hockey, so I think it's only fitting if Sabo shows it himself. When we see Sabo in the Dressrosa arc, we see his mastery and control of the flow of his hockey, potentially using the advanced version at times. He also recently got the new moniker Flame Emperor, which implies he'll become the new face of the revolution as the story continues. I think that he will likely unlock his Conqueror's Hockey sometime in the final saga. Number 3, we got Akainu. Akainu is one of the strongest willed personalities in all of the One Piece story. He's willing to go to whatever lengths he deems necessary to make sure that his absolute justice is maintained. During the time skip, he showed how far his will can take him, fighting Admiral Aokiji for 10 days straight, and ultimately winning and earning the right to lead the Marines as the new fleet admiral. Being portrayed to be a step above the already mighty admirals combined with his determination, I think he's a good option to have here. Okay, so number two, we got Monkey D. Dragon. Dragon has already shown his strong will and desire in being the original founder, leader, and face of the Revolutionary Army. His moniker as the world's most wanted criminal very much stands out in a story that's about pirates and him not even being one. Also, in Marineford, Akainu starts going hard after Luffy once he realizes that he's Dragon's son, and mainly only referred to him as such. So if Luffy's potential was thought to be so great by Akainu, at this time, solely due to his relation to Dragon, I'm gonna assume that Dragon's got it. Last but not least, we got Bizarro Luffy, also known as Blackbeard. There are a lot of reasons why people say that Blackbeard may not be a conqueror, such as him not blindly fighting people like Akainu when they pull up on him to collect Julie Bonnie. But I think this mainly just goes to the fact that Blackbeard is a smart, calculated person who prefers to use strategy to gain an advantage instead of just going headfirst into battle like some other conquerors. Blackbeard is portrayed to be, if not Luffy's final endgame fight, then one of the last, and his greatest pirate rival. Luffy not only is a conqueror, but has conqueror's coding now that he gained in his fight with Kaido. Blackbeard is also a Rocksteady Zebek fanboy, and although we don't know what Zebek was like completely, I have a feeling he may have also been a strategic person in the way that he moved, but was definitely a conqueror. His crew had several confirmed conquerors, and that affected several of those crewmates in the way that they decided to build their own crews. Blackbeard wants his island, the pirate Beehive Hachinosu, to be recognized as the nation of the world's government for him to be named its king. Blackbeard has never been short on ambition, whether that's king of a nation, king of the pirates, or maybe even king of the world. Blackbeard definitely has the will of a conqueror. 